Louise Menendez. And I am Rachel Chang. Welcome back to FIE News. Experts say the stressors that healthcare workers experience could lead to mental health issues. Reporter Jessica Ramirez tells us how nurses cope with COVID-19 and how they will move forward. COVID-19 has affected everyone's life in some way, but for healthcare workers, the invisible enemy comes with new challenges. With concerns for their own well-being, nurses in the Florida hotspot of the pandemic try different ways to help avoid developing mental health problems. More than anything, it's been trying to keep a positive attitude at work with all the staff and the nurses and the nursing assistants, explaining to them and reminding them why we became nurses in the first place because you tend to get a lot of either I'm scared, a little bit of anxiety, I don't want to do this. Healthcare workers on the front lines are more susceptible to experiencing psychological burdens, according to expert Diamela Arancibia. She also shares some of the ways these healthcare workers can cope during these uncertain times. Right, in order for, in terms of like coping strategies for that, people do meditation or yoga. Yoga is a form of both meditation and exercise would be really, really good. I mean, that could help you focus and centerize yourself. So you could focus on today instead of focusing on tomorrow or like the next day. Right, so instead of people thinking about, okay, what's going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen the next month, etc., people can focus on, okay, what can I control today that could better help me feel better right now. As more and more places of business and recreation open, healthcare workers brace themselves in the event of a second wave of the coronavirus infections. This period of time has allowed them to really um, get ready for this new wave coming in that it's inevitably bound to happen because people are going to still you know, they have to resume their lives and they have to continue. And it's a virus and unfortunately, it's going to continue to spread. Nurse Leonette Alfonso recommends that you continue to wear masks, wash your hands, and make a conscious effort of things you touch that could potentially spread the virus. From South Florida Media Network, I'm Jessica Ramirez. Thank you, Jessica. I can imagine how stressful it must be to be in their shoes. What do you think, Rachel? Yes, and Maddie's COVID-19 is still spreading. The question is, are people still practicing social distancing? Protests around the country due to George Floyd's death continue, and South Florida is no different. Reporter Talia Dominguez witnessed the downtown Miami protest firsthand. COVID-19 cases spiked after two weeks of Miami's mass protest against police brutality. Miami-Dade County cases increased by 209, adding up to nearly 20,000 as of Monday morning. Despite outbreak, protests are still being held all across the city. This is Talia Dominguez reporting from South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Talia. For anyone who wants to get involved but can't attend an in-person protest, Dream Defenders shared several calls to action, including donating to the Floyd Family's Memorial Fund. These manifestations continue despite the coronavirus pandemic, which has also affected blood donations. Reporter Loretta Alvarez has more on the story. The coronavirus pandemic has created a shortage of blood donations around the country, as people are scared to donate for fear of infections. Blood is needed every day in order to provide treatments to every patient. According to the FDA, one blood donation can save up to three lives. Organizations like the Red Cross, FDA, and One Blood are encouraging people to donate. Blood donations are not only important for everyday use, but with the ongoing health crisis, if a person donates blood and tests positive for the COVID-19 antibodies, the plasma can be used to treat other patients. Reporting for the South Florida Media Network, Loretta Alvarez. Thank you, Loretta. Donations are a great way to help the community during this time. I agree, Maris. Practicing social distancing is easier when quarantined, and many Americans have concerns with businesses opening up. Reporter Marie Serrado tells us more. With cases here in South Florida continuing to rise, along with the deaths, many are concerned what outcome will come about from people breaking these social distance rules made by the government of Florida. With shops, places of business, and public settings all opening up, social distance among South Florida begins to slowly disappear, leaving others to figure out ways on how to stay safe, maintain social distancing, protect themselves and their loved ones. This is Marie Serrato reporting for the South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Marie. Precautions are still recommended in our transition to the new normal. Yes, Rachel. Self-isolation has affected us all. Introverts and extroverts are coping with different ways to avoid stress and anxiety. Melissa Charia clarifies what to do in these circumstances. COVID-19 is affecting opposing personality types differently. Introverts prefer staying indoors. Extroverts are having a much more difficult time during quarantine. 
Although introverts have felt anxiety throughout the pandemic, they seem less inclined to depression. Hobbies like computer work, video games, and other activities like reading are practiced more. It's been pretty refreshing uh, because of all the things I've been able to do that I, I didn't really have time for before. Yet for extroverts, they depend more on physical contact to feel content. Self-isolation has become more of a lonely hideout and less of a break from a daily work routine. They enjoy poolside relaxation and outside exercises. The lockdown has been massively depressing to me. Very difficult. Experts say re-energizing is needed for both personality types. Introverts re-energize by themselves and indoors. Extroverts need to be outside and have human interaction. A South Florida specialist has an advice for both. For both of personality types, find your joy. Find something that you truly enjoy doing and implement that. You may figure out what your joy is by the things that you're missing. Introverts are adapting to solitary confinement. Extroverts need conversations with others to feel alive. But both personality types do agree on one thing. This is a time for a self-realization. This is Melissa Charia reporting for the South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Melissa. For anyone having trouble during these times, visit www.psychologytoday.com to see which personality type you are compatible with and practice activities that suit you best. Pets have become great companions during quarantine. Here's Betsabe Romero with an inside scoop. COVID-19 has affected everyone. Even pets felt the impact of the pandemic. During these hard times, people can feel stressed so they feel comfortable with their best friend. Today, we are going to interview Tiffany Sharia, Kumba's owner, who will explain how her pet has helped her get through quarantine. My, my puppy has helped me in many ways. Um, he's just been very supportive. Um, you can do so many things during the pandemic and then you get bored, but with a puppy, he's very nonchalant and he likes to play, so it, it's a never dull moment. This is Betsabe Romero reporting for South Florida Media Network. Thank you, Betsabe. What a fantastic story to end our news today. Yeah, I love a pet companion, especially dogs. Well, there you have it. That was all for today. I am Edvaris Menendez. And I am Rachel Chang, here on FIU News. Until next time, Pam.